All right, welcome back to another video. Uh, in our last video, or one of our last videos, we went hunting and you guys really liked that video. It got like a hundred and something thousand views, which was insane. Now I've got very good news about hunting specifically, but I've also got really bad news today. Um, some friends of mine, actually the same friends that I went hunting with, John and Dave, they went back to Barkensrug to go do another hunt this past weekend and while they were out in the felt the whole place burned down like nothing left it's absolutely wrecked which is incredibly sad um, so what I thought if you guys want I'm gonna have my PayPal address here or down below if you want to make some sort of contribution let's call it a fundraiser that we can give to Roland and his family to help them rebuild Barkensrug to, to even better than what it was when we were there. I think that could be super cool for us as a community. So I'm just gonna leave that there. Don't feel obligated to do that. But if you want, I will pass along that donation to them. Um, yeah, such a bummer. I'm just glad nobody got hurt in the fire. That's, I guess that's all you can hope for. But my friends lost everything like, the only thing they came back with on Sunday night was their rifles, which they had with them in the field and their camo clothing and whatever they had in their packs. Um, the rest, all their clothes, all, I mean, my, my one friend had purchased a brand new Kestrel, which is a very expensive device, as you guys know. He hadn't quite set it up yet, left it in his pack at, at home and that's like all that kind of stuff is gone. Um, so yeah real bummer to start this video on anyway on to the lighter side of things i'm going hunting again with the bird shawls now you guys will remember the bird shawls because i did a very cool video with them where fred and i were able to harvest a massive kudu bull now to give you some perspective of the size of this bull people often like sit back behind the animal a bit to make it appear bigger but i'm going to show you guys an image now where our tracker is actually lying behind the bull holding it by the neck so that we could take the picture from the other side and there's actually a whole person lying behind this and i'm sitting right on its butt it was a giant so i'm not necessarily going out to shoot a big kudu bull again i felt that i've i've ticked that box i'm really still shooting for meat and at frontier safaris they basically catered to international hunters now due to COVID-19 there hasn't been much international hunters at all this year so we're basically going to go in there and just help them manage some of the animals some impala uh, maybe one or two other species we'll see so what is the purpose of today's video today's video I'm going to talk about everything I sort of take with on a hunt now when we were hunting at Barkensrug I realize I have too much stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna have a sip of tea. It is freezing in Cape Town. Uh, we had a big storm roll in, so while I have some tea, I'm gonna show you guys some footage of the storm from yesterday. Mm, I'm a sucker for a good cup of tea when it's cold. So anyway, I kind of, retrospectively looked at everything and I was like Pete you take too much stuff bro um but then I as I sort of laid everything out here that we have on the table I realized like there's not a hell of a lot I can cut back on so I'm basically gonna walk you guys through sort of everything I take worth on a hunt now keep in mind I'm taking way more stuff than the average person takes because we're also filming this hunt for you guys I need I need cameras okay so you guys are on that camera and if you look this way you'll be on the camera that's in the roof too which my hand should be in frame my hand should actually be round about here i messed up the framing a little bit but anyway that is for when i show you guys stuff on the table so i've got two cameras that means batteries for each camera three batteries for this camera two batteries for that camera multiple lenses okay so these weigh a ton this is a 400 so it goes out quite a bit um so those are heavy new to the edition which we didn't have at Barkensrug is our drone Mavic Air 2 plus its remote plus extra batteries now keep in mind 
over and above this you still need to take all the charging stuff to charge all these things up the next day so just for simplicity's sake i think i'm sort of going to work my way across the table other than that i'm obviously also taking ammo so these ammo that's in here i'm shooting a big seven mil mag as you guys know i still need to go and just do the last sort of bit of load development on these guys because last time what happened was i just took my muzzle brake load and i slapped the suppressor on the front of my rifle now this is very important to understand if you're all of a sudden hanging a weight the suppressor on the front of your muzzle it's going to drastically change the harmonics of your barrel so where my gun used to shoot like this with the uh, silencer on my groupings open up a little bit so basically what i'm going to do i'm just going to run my ocw again now i can't decide really which silencer i want to take this is the one i shot last time i also have this carbon fiber one but I've never used this one. Um, it's just, it's a little bit too big for my liking. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of fun here, right? Um, by the way, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so down here. Um, so I'm thinking I'm just gonna go for this one. If anybody wants a carbon fiber suppressor silencer in South Africa, which by the way, for my American viewers, we can just buy. You know, it's not a restricted item. Okay, so that sort of takes the camera stuff off. Then just some things that's nice to have, but not necessarily 100% need to have. I've always been a firm believer in taking sunblock into the field. I try and take one with a little bit of a matte finish just so that I can reduce any form of shine. I also take some sort of bug repellent. By the way, if you hear some sort of background noise, I apologize for that. Somebody has decided it is now time to mow the lawn. Um, so I prefer the roll-on type just cause, you know, spray bottle, it's significantly bigger. So something small like that. I also always carry a headlamp with me. You never know, you might wound an animal, touch wood that we don't do that, but a nice little headlamp is a really cool addition to any pack and really doesn't take up much space. Seldomly use this in the field, but it is nice for at least in the morning getting the barometric pressure. This is of course a Kestrel. I use the Hornady Fordoff model. Now this next item is, I think, the most underrated item in this pack, okay? It's dental floss. Okay, so first of all, you can do quite a lot with dental floss, makeshift things, because it's, it's a very strong material. But I quite like snacking on the odd piece of bultong or drovors while we're out in the felt. So having some dental floss is quite nice because it's nothing's worse than having something stuck in your teeth the whole day. So the one thing we sort of skipped over is the spotting scope. Now I am running at the moment, I'm running the reticle eyepiece in the spotting scope. I'll probably switch that out because when you're running the reticle eyepiece, you can't get the variable power. So for target shooting, this is obviously awesome, but for hunting, it's quite nice to be able to back in and out a bit. This is the Razer 85 millimeter model, quite nice little built-in sunshade. But this generally stays in the car. Now, the way the hunting setup works at Frontier Safaris is pretty cool. The property is so freaking big. I'll check with Fred exactly what the size of the property is, but it's, it's gigantic. Like you can't cover it all on foot. So generally what we do, we drive around, we find a group of animals off into the distance and we sort of formulate a game plan and try and put a stalk on them taking the wind into the count, the where the sun is at, how much time we've got. And this is quite handy for sort of helping to set up those initial parts of the game plan. But then this generally stays in the car, especially this year, because we have bigger lenses and stuff that will be able to crank you guys in on those, on those engagements with the actual camera. And my brother is joining us on this trip too, because he's gonna try and, first of all, carry some of this stuff. Um, and also he's gonna be cameraman and hopefully we don't have any repeats of some beautiful shots not being on film because of Fred's lack of pushing the record button. If you guys haven't seen that video you can click up here while I have another sip of tea. Now don't click here because I'm just going to link it at the end and then you you can watch the rest of this video. Mm. Okay obviously also for all the camera stuff we need memory cards because when you film in 4k like we do you take up a ton of memory. To give you some perspective, a normal movie, if you were to sample movies before you buy them from the internet, it would be about a gig and a half. When you do 4K, this video that I'm gonna upload today is probably gonna push close to five gigs for the video. Other thing that's also nice to have 
is tools because you never know something could go wrong with your rifle i want to thank my friend skulk who recently got me these fixed sticks which is basically a torque wrench set all in one i've added some other bells and whistles to this kit um like another piece of dental floss i could probably bomb this one let's bomb this one um and a nail clipper the reason this is pretty cool, you might hook your nail on something and now you're struggling with something and you guys know like, oh, let me just pull this off and then, and then and your hand is screwed. So I like just having something like this, quite nice to trim little pieces off uh, and that stays in there. Also in this kit, I've got my Vortex little scope tool adjustment. So I've got everything that I need compartmentalized in this little fix it sticks. I'm gonna run my Razor 4000 as my rangefinder of choice. Now on our last hunt at Bargensrug, I did make the mistake of not taking binoculars. So I was able to watch the Oryx, also known as Gemsbok in South Africa, Afrikaans word of the day, Gemsbok, that's an Oryx. Um, the ones with the long pointy horns, I'll show you some video of that. Um, I was able to watch them and observe them with this guy, but they were really far and it really would have been handy to have binos. Now, I do have binos, they are over here. However, because we do the odd unboxing on this channel, I haven't opened them because I want to unbox them for you guys. But before this hunt, I'm going to unbox them for you. So that's probably going to be one of our upcoming videos, the UHD ultra high definition binos from Vortex. Those are brand new. So we've spoken about the suppressor. We're going to pop that guy down over there. These two suppressors are going to go back here just to clear up a little bit of space. I generally take hearing protection even though we will be shooting suppressed generally in the days before we go hunting when we get to the farm we'll verify dope data on previous engagements just make sure our rifles are shooting exactly where they need to be so i have got my hearing protection for that they probably won't go out into the field with me although i do have those electronic in-ear hearing protections but i have found if you're going to be shooting one or two shots hopefully no more than that at an animal then really with the suppressor especially on a bigger diameter bullet that's maybe not doing three two like some of my other rifles do it's not that bad on the ears this is probably the most underrated piece of kit that i don't see hunters taking into the field this is a boar snake so i'll probably before the hunt just cut this packaging down a little bit to reduce its profile and the reason i basically take that is i mean we're walking with our rifles in sometimes super dodgy, slippery conditions, especially this time of the year in South Africa, it's basically midwinter in SA. If you fall and you push your muzzle into the ground or a stick breaks off as you're navigating under some bushes and it falls down into your rifle barrel, you could have some problems. So having one of these with you in that case in your backpack really doesn't take up much space. You can run the quick bore snake through there, make sure your barrel is clear of any obstructions. And that could save a hunt you know if you don't have one of these and you're out in the middle especially for the guys in the us you guys doing backcountry stuff you're in there for a few days maybe we go, we we go back to the lodge every night okay we're not i wish we could do the backcountry stuff i'd love to do that in fact if you're in america and you're an outfitter or you know of an outfitter that i can do a cool video for i would absolutely love to do that go on a mule deer hunt or something like that Anyway, so I take a boar snake with me because that could save your butt. It's always like that cliche saying goes, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So let's park this stuff over there. We've spoken about the game changer. The next thing I don't think people give enough credit for is taking some sort of medical protection with. So we all have the odd headache tablet, maybe some nausea stuff, but I take quite a bit of stuff with and I have it in one of these pouches. I actually sold these on my website for quite some time, but they've pretty much sold out quickly. I've got some boo-boo kits over here. We've got some burn stuff. We've got a tourniquet. Tourniquet, super helpful. I usually take a backup tourniquet too. If you have a massive gunshot wound or you've fallen and you've got a compound fracture or something and you're losing a lot of blood, this could save a life. I also run these in my car cubbyhole. Maybe if you watch the EDC video, you would have seen that. We have these on our website, by the way. Only a few left. Um, speaking of websites. Shameless plug. Okay, so that's the medical kit. Now let's get over to why we, what we do on this channel. 
Optic wise, I'm gonna run my AMG. This is a 6224. Now the reason I like the AMG on the hunting rifle, it's got locking turrets, it's got everything I need, and it's light. Something versus compared to, let me just, uh, razor is in this drawer. Whew, you can just instantly feel the difference in weight. Obviously this has a little bit of a heavier mount, but the weight on this is significantly more than this. And the reason I like the AMG for that is, it gives me sort of all that tactical features that I'm used to with the throw lever, all of those things in my competition scope, the reticle's exactly the same. So when I'm hunting, I usually study my ballistics app and I see, right, uh, one and a half mil gives me X distance so that I know if I need to do a quick holdover shot, I know exactly where it is in my reticle. I don't even need to do any adjustments on my scope itself. Um, also, these have been tried and tested by me in match conditions, I've bumped them, I've dropped them, and I know they're pretty damn bulletproof. Okay, rifle-wise, same rifle as last time. Not actually even my rifle anymore. My friend Skulk purchased this guy from me after our last hunt. He liked it so much. Woo, we can't go there. There's stuff over there. Um, but yeah, as you can see, completely disassembled because after the last hunt, I cleaned this sucker out completely. Needs a vertical grip on here needs a scope, needs the suppressor on the front. So quite a bit of work to do, but that's probably gonna be a separate video. I'm gonna do a video for you guys, how I set this up for hunting and sort of use the ACC. That's obviously a competition chassis in a hunting style environment. We're gonna need a magazine for that guy, obviously. The other thing also that recently came in stock are these short action precision two round holders that are like this. So I quite like these for a hunting environment. They stick onto your rifle with a little bit of Velcro and you can run two additional rounds here if you don't like walking with rounds in your magazine. By the way, I need to show you guys something that I, I have seen as a worrying trend. Hopefully you're not guilty of this. Let me make sure this is in frame here. I see a lot of guys, let's say, okay, mag is clear by the way. Let me just double check that chamber. Okay, so the rifle is clear. Now what I see guys doing is they put a round into the chamber, they close their bolt, and then they open it up just a little bit. Okay, that rifle is not safe, because if you pull the trigger, that's gonna happen. Okay, now you could argue that the firing pin's only gonna strike the primer as the bolt closes all the way, but if that round detonates, I think you're definitely gonna damage your action and I don't think it's worth the risk. So, there's a reason your rifle has a safety and as that saying goes, this at the end of the day is your safety too. But I generally never put a round in the chamber unless I am actually ready to engage. Some other things we take with, obviously a knife and then I have been running buffs for the longest time, long before this was a go-to thing for general society. And the reason I do that is, first of all, I don't wanna get sunburned. That helps a long way with um, the sunburn, but this does wear off as you're sweating and you're itching and you're doing stuff that you don't realize you're doing. So I generally try and keep my face out the sun too. If you're moving a lot, that is a big thing that's moving and the animal could see that. So I try and cover up my face and I'm gonna match that with my hat. I also take some sunglasses with. I take my audio stuff with. By the way, this is how we do audio. You pink duct tape it to your chest. That is pretty much how we roll. I'm gonna take my knife. By the way, not this knife. My daughter got me a new knife for Father's Day with a gut hook. And after my friend Skulk showed me how to actually use the gut hook, it's basically like a unzipper, so super cool and I can't wait to use this guy. What else are we missing here? I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing something. If I did miss something that I take on a hunt, oh, that goes without saying. My camelback behind me, that's the backpack I take. I, I think it holds a five liter bladder. Let me grab this for you guys. Now what I quite like about how the bladder is positioned, it's positioned here in the bottom of the bag. Let me just undo that. It rides here in your lower back, so that's pretty cool. And I really like how this just clips in and out and you never have all like, oh, I left the tap open and now there's water everywhere when you try and refill this. So I will have all my camera stuff, my snacks, my water, everything like that's gonna be with me. The other thing I didn't mention is I also take 
this little light because if you're filming it's dark in the morning and um, you might need a little bit of extra light because otherwise you know the cameras really struggle with low light situations so this guy is an aperture mc and that's really going to just give me the ability to get light on a subject it's pretty cool it can do it can do some cool stuff so and it are magnetic so you can pick up your knife too if that's something you want to do <laughs> anyway that's kind of it it's a lot of stuff right um do you guys take less stuff do you take more stuff obviously in this this must still come i generally run a nice little bino harness which i think that has in we'll have to do the unboxing on that but yeah that's generally my my hunting setup in an ideal world i could get rid of some weight here because this is not light but it does the job and as you guys saw on the springbok hunting video i would just get up and walk normally to a pole and engage the animals off the pole because i think if you're doing the like sneaky sneaky then they see that as sneaky behavior where i would just kind of you know sneaky ish medium sneaky <laughs> let's coin that term um anyway that's my hunting pack this video was brought to you by mdt as you can see right there behind me mdt are the providers of my chassis system of choice they're the first chassis that i ever purchased and there's a reason i purchased that i looked around at some of the other stuff really nothing tickled my fancy i found the mdt website love at first sight and now how awesome it is to work with them on a continued basis like this so if you want to shop a chassis system like the ones i use by the way i've got an lss an lss gen 2 here um this could be something that i could oh that's going to be very noisy on the microphone this could be something that i run on the hunt okay it's way lighter than the acc this was basically designed for hunting the main reason i'm not doing this this is for a remington 700 short action and this rifle is obviously built on a long action now you say pete you could take alexa yes i could take alexa the problem with alexa is i don't have a silencer for alexa also if we're engaging bigger animals i like the knocking power of the seven more, a little bit more but that's just my personal preference guys once again mdt thank you very much for making this show possible for all the people subscribed to the channel we couldn't do this without you guys man i'm i'm super humbled every single day that i get to make a video for you guys it is so cool for me to hit that little upload button and yeah it's it's it feels surreal like it feels surreal to me that i get to make videos for you guys and you guys are liking the content so on that note please share these videos with your friends some of our other tutorials and stuff i'm going to leave a little playlist here with some of my other hunting videos since we're in the hunting mood really i've found myself thinking about hunting pretty much non-stop for the last while um so if you like the video make sure you always leave a like leave me a comment down below i'd really like reading them and i'll see you guys in the next video where we're probably going to be unboxing this guy